Welcome to Dynamo Dog Sports, a world-class canine training center. <laughs> Only the most talented dogs are allowed to play here. Push. Kirsten O'Neill grew up in this world. <laughs> She's been training dogs yes, since she girl. was a toddler. It's good, it's good. This is her life. It's good, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good, it's good. Can't believe there's no weed poles in this jail, hey? All day long, Kirsten and her mother Shauna build obstacle courses so they can play a game with their dogs called agility. Most agility handlers think that only purebreds are smart enough to play this game. With one exception, Crocodile Crunch, a mutt, found abandoned at the rodeo. The rescue dog has no breeding papers to prove her agility potential. Most likely, her ancestors are free-spirited mongrels, but she doesn't care. She is determined to stand up to these obsessive, compulsive pedigrees. Yes, Pritchy! Pritchy! Go! Yes! Over! Run! Run! In, 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 in! Yes! Pritchy! So agility, you'll have one run where, oh, the, you're feeling it. You're pulling, and the dog's pulling, and you turn, and the dog turns. It's such a beautiful dance. Five, did he right? call the dog or did he call the person? No, the dog. Dog. Special six, special ten, no. and special six. Sorry. Sorry. Monty. Monty. Monty, Bear, Mr. Mouse, Hunt. We need, we need to find somebody who can set options for gamblers. That's it. Nope, they're coming this way. Yeah, you got it. This over here. Right? We heard about this weird sport called agility. We were living in Saskatchewan at the time, and of course, it wasn't even born yet. Take it to the other side. I travel an hour and a half to classes once a week to try out this okay. new agility thing. No, 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 no. Driving in the middle of winter, and it was crazy. I got hooked right away. Bars. Did, double. Did you look over? Uh, I haven't looked anywhere. They were in between the two rings, but see right there? Yeah, you got it. OK, well, uh, God, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, just wait, 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 wait. These ones here. Nice. 
In agility, the dogs run with no food or toys as incentives. The handler is not allowed to touch the dog or the obstacle. Control of the dog is limited to voice and body language. It took many years of training to build enough confidence in this bulldog to compete. And Finnegan, afraid of heights, still needs a lot of encouragement. Come on. OK, big finish. Quanchi is doing really well this weekend. So far, she's leading the pack. Kristen runs hard in every course. She puts it on the line. So I always worry about her out there. And so she should. Years ago, Kirsten injured her knee. But because she's always busy running dogs, she didn't take time for surgery. Yeah, I was working on a dog and it tweaked my knee. A little discomfort there in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Evidently, Kirsten asked someone else to run one of her dogs, which led to her being disqualified. Fuck! <laughs> no, we're not! No, no we're not! Sorry. <laughs> She's just had to call all of her dogs. <laughs> this misconduct has violated the rights of other dog handlers who only run their own dogs. You can absolutely change the running one. This is ridiculous. Let somebody else go rather than having everybody wait. You need to stop. She's just had to pull all of her dogs. Fine. So you need to stop. But just please stop. To, to be able just to run. stop. There's no you that need says to you have just to run stop, for stop for a second. Stop for a second. Stop for a second. You don't care about regionals. She's in first. You, she's going to be in first at nationals. Regionals is nothing. This situation is unprecedented. There is no clear ruling. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Think about it. What happens if I run her? She'll probably be eliminated. From that like, run? No. From that run? So I'm going to get eliminated from that fucking run anyway. I'm fucking running. All right. Well, let's ask the question. 38, Can I borrow you for a second? What is the consequence for Kirsten if she comes out and runs a dog? What's her own dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So would she be eliminated in that round? Kick her out of the whole competition? Like, yes? If she wants to run her dog, mm -hmm. have at her. But I don't think that the run should count. She's going to run her dogs. She'll just get eliminated every time. Yeah. Hey. We'll show them up at nationals. Are they allowed to have their qualifying ribbons for nationals right now if they're leaving? No. Ribbons happen after. OK, got it. Oh, the ribbons. The dream of every agility handler. Over the years, Kirsten and Shauna have earned hundreds. People say, oh, you guys are just, you know, elitist and want to compete, you know, for worlds. And it's not that way at all. You know, we've been doing it for a really long time, and, and you can give me a, you know, 50-cent ribbon, and that's awesome. But I'd rather go out there each course and learn something about, you know, how to run my dog. I don't really care about the ribbon anymore. When I first started, absolutely, I want my 50-cent ribbon. Because at first, it, the first dog I had, it took me, like, four years to get that first ribbon. <laughs> Now, I'm like, I don't care about the ribbon. I want to go out there and learn something every time I step on the course. So that's the point, right? And when you, when you step on the course and you, and you want those things, then you tend to become a better handler. To finance their passion, Kirsten is managing the Dynamo Dog Sports facility full time. She offers agility training sessions for all performance levels, and she runs a doggy day school. Not 
it's your turn. Lily. Your name is not Lily. 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 Good. Kirsten's dogs are international champions. She has an unusual yeah. way of choosing them. Yeah. I get dogs that I like, Bradley. and then I just try to make them competitive. Pashi lived in an apartment with the breeder for the first six months of her life, and she didn't do anything. And she's a really high energy dog. So she basically became a neurotic mess. I took her to nationals two years ago, I was petting her, and I realized that all her pads were just blood. She had haste so much that she had worn her pads down to nothing. So now I make sure she's as calm as possible. Radical. Sit. Good girl. Down. Really? Down. Sit. No. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Down. Good. Stand. Yes. Good girl. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> Radical Rabbit is my reigning world champion, so. <laughs> With Radical, it's more of a team bond. Melon was our bred to do police work, to bite people and take bad guys down. You do have to kind of harness that in a way that's positive, <laughs> but without letting them get out of control. Yeah, good girl. Oh, you got my hand. <laughs> it's definitely not common to have a mixed breed get to that level at all. There are dogs that are bred generations and generations to get this ultimate dog. Crunchy was just a farm accident. Um, she's a cattle dog, Jack Russell Cross. Everyone says you shouldn't have a favorite, but Crunchy's my favorite. Yes. She feels more like a child. She's the only one that really like always cuddles me. You know, all the Malinois, they try to bite me. Pinnacle! <gasps> Naughty! Come here! No, come here. Come here. <gasps> Baby, what was that? Come here. <gasps> no. Too much. <laughs> Enough. This agility trial at minus 17 degrees is a warm-up to the World Championships. Kirsten was able to qualify all of her dogs. Superfast Malinois, Radical Rabbit, and Supertense Parsons Terrier, Porsche Piranha. And then the big surprise. Crocodile Crunch, the Heinz 57. She's going to be a star on the world stage. And Shauna gets the job as the head coach of Team Canada. There's a cheater there! My name is... Who's... What's my name? My name is... Crunch. I am traveling to Amster. Damn. Please do not open my crates or I will run away and you will not ever catch me. Turn. I just 
in and start. I will uh, review you again when they're ready. I'll do the water in the tub. Very good. What's going on? <laughs> Crunchy has yep. to share her crate with neurotic Porsche as her emotional support animal. This should keep her calm. But we don't have to worry too much. These are jet-setting dogs. Just, you're not quite there yet. They have many yeah. hours of flying on their track record there you go. Yeah. and countless air miles. No problem. Have a good flight. There could be no better place for a world competition than the Netherlands. This exceptional country defied nature by gaining land back from the sea. All year round, this Dutch training facility is used for equestrian dressage. But this weekend, the barn will be invaded by 250 dogs and their handlers from 16 countries. Team Canada arrives a day early to mark their territory. So they're going to make a stance yeah. over there for spectators. Yes, yes. And then and what about the here, team? Yes? Over there, there are coming five tents. OK. With chairs and... Uh, OK, so... So you can sit also there. OK, 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 but not stands. No, no, no. OK, OK, OK. No, the stands is over there. Over there. And then, can you go here anywhere? For to the, the team people? Yeah. Is for there team any... managers? No, no, like for team members to watch like, the competition. Over there. Over it's okay. There. It's okay. It's yes. okay. It's okay. Okay. You can sit over here. Perfect. What you oh, want. Perfect. Okay, okay, okay. You can sit over there in the tent. Well, just because we then we'll make a Canada space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's nice. But I, I don't think we can take the whole thing. I think that would be a little it's much. We have a team of 24. I think we can take four. I think we should take four here and see what happens. Okay, go around, go around the back of each one, guys, at least once. They are highly motivated. <laughs> Team Canada has consistently come in second in the medal rankings. This year, they are determined to win it all. I don't want to take too much space. It'll be greedy. After a good night of sleep in Snöperich Dutch cottages, Team Canada is ready for the first day of competition. Nothing should go wrong. Chips. Bye. Oh, hi. Come on. Okay, radical stop. I don't know if I'm supposed to be waiting for people or not. Maybe I'll just stop and make sure they have it on their navigational system as well. I didn't ask them that question. Well, I'm sure they do. Uh, uh, yeah, you're sure about everything. I'm not sure. That's why I'm asking. When you say you're following me, does that mean you don't have it on your Navigation, so if I lose you, you're like hooped? No, I still, I can still You it. have it as well. Okay, what about those guys? Good. Oh, he's good, okay. We're, so we're good? Okay, do you drive okay, fast, kind of? Can you keep up? Did they have it? Yeah. And that's okay, but I still want to make sure. There's a door open. Just don't lean on it. Should be fine. <laughs> yeah, ready? Yes, good. Ready? All right.
They have come a long way at their own expense. Although not very successful, Team Japan has been faithfully attending the IFCS Agility Championship from the very beginning. Team member Atsushi Matsuoka kindly acts as our translator. He asked team captain Tetsu Watanabe why agility is so popular in Japan. Yes, uh, the number of cats is actually more than the number of dogs in Japan. But uh, we can't do this sport with cats, you know. In, so uh, actually, dog is uh, only animal pet uh, to give us opportunity to have fun with some sports. Team USA. They claim to be the biggest agility association in the world. However, they also do not rank high in the standings. We wonder why. They have enough space, they have enough dogs. In the land of opportunities, why are they not more successful? The vast majority of our team have other professions. We're just hobbyists. Our guys aren't going to put forth, you know, an hour, two hours every day uh, training. First and foremost, these are all our pets. She's excited. She knows the difference between a big event and a regular event. So does Team Canada. Their handlers and dogs are extremely focused. Jet-lagged Radical Rabbit yes. does her first drills in the warm-up zone. Bottom, 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 bottom. Bottom, bottom. That's good girl. What a good bottom. Wait, am I good? Wait. It's Crunchy's first time at a big event. She's trying really hard to stay bottom. focused. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Crunch, crunch. Crunchy! Crunchy! Crunch! Get over here! Oh, come here. Get it. Get it. Nope. went into heat just before the competition. She's still allowed to run, but she has to obey certain rules so her alluring scent does not distract other competitors. This year, the Italians are highly motivated to move up the ranks. They are tired of always coming in third. We have uh, a lot of uh, professional um, people in our team, a trainer and uh, a coach, uh, an assistant coach, and uh, they mental love coach. The mental co two mental coach, two mental coach, and they love this uh, sport and uh, can try to help uh, the athletes for uh, all uh, preparation. 24 handlers, team coach, assistant coach, two mental coaches, a physiotherapist and a photographer. The Italians mean business. But Russian coach Elena Chukina is not concerned. Sure, her team is much smaller. Still, every year, the Russians win 50% of the medals. How is it possible? Nobody says it out loud, but there are rumors that the dogs are being doped. And look at their bus. Obviously, the team is state-sponsored. Spokesperson for the Russian team is Anastasia Ergorova. Nothing is as it seems. Russian Ministry of Sports used to sponsor everything. This year they actually pulled out 36 hours before the bus left. So we ended up having to self-fund it at a very short notice. 
Our team leaders who are literally using their credit cards to pay all of that. When we come back, we'll be fundraising to pay the team leaders back, because if not them, we just wouldn't be here. Good news for everyone but the Russians. Their superstar Stanislav Kurochkin didn't come this year. When he runs, the Cold War is forgotten. Even the Americans are dumb. Stas just chose not to go because it's just too much money. And I mean, he's been here and he won pretty much everything you can win here. I think we're all good because we're here and we made it, <laughs> despite all of that. That's the way Russians work, unfortunately, despite everything. <laughs> despite the winter, <laughs> despite the government that pulls off. We're here, we're happy to be here. Well, I think that's gonna be the same as every year. We'll win it all, that's what we do. Okay, dear competitors, please do come in. First team, Australia. The opening ceremony. championship is open so good luck to all of you and welcome to the Netherlands okay thank you Evangeline Tsubaki and her poodle partner Sira Matsu from Japan are breaking ground the first one is the hardest yeah. This is Lisa Sun, the manager of Team Canada. Lisa meticulously keeps track of all 300 runs per day. The judges can't always be trusted. It is good to have a backup. Porsche always needs a massage before her run. Like Melania Trump, the Parsons Terrier was born in Slovenia. Being in heat, the immigrant dog is under a lot of pressure. The first dog running in the small dog category is Maverick, an American Corgi. A cute dog, but no real competition from Miss Porsche. Three, seven, 
Oh well, Marburg didn't live up to his name today. Let's see if Porsche is doing any better. In the 30s. Well, 31, Bush Piranha. Parson Jack Russell Terrier by Kirsten O'Neill, Canada. Start. One. The Terrier is off to a good start. She's running a very tight race in this extremely challenging course. Seven. One. Seven. She's racing through the tunnel, bounding over the jumps. She's flying over the A-frame without missing the contacts. She's coming up to the weaves, which are always a big challenge. But she does them beautifully. Coming into the final stretch. Okay. A gorgeous effort under the circumstances. It was just not fast enough. 37.97? 30, I think 37.97. I started agility with my Rottweiler, and then I ran little pugs. So I see my shirt with the little guys here. So I run a little pugs. And these guys are, people shouldn't rule out pugs because they both did very well in agility. They became national champions, so they were they were not the fastest, but they were very smart. I, I you know I trained them, I gave them the skills, because I want to always show people the the possibilities you can have with a dog, and it doesn't have to be you know the border collie, it doesn't have to be the sheltie. It's you know what I did it with my little pugs. I'm gonna get emotional. Because I did it with non-conventional breeds because a pug body, with the way they move, their structure is not ideal for agility, but I turned them into champions. I know my mom has passed away, I'm so sorry. But my mom, one of her, the little, the little guy with the wide face, he was my mom's dog, but I turned my mom's dog into a national champion, which she was very proud of, because to have her little pug, who was supposed to be just a pet, became an, an agility champion two times. And I think that's one of the biggest things in her life that she was so proud of. It was her pug. I want to say she was most proud of me, but I think she was most proud of her pug. But I couldn't have done it without my teammate, who were these little pugs. Because I'm trying to be the best handler I can be. And I gave the pugs the skills to win in agility, which they did for me. So not only did I turn them into champions, but they also helped me become one as well in agility. I know, sorry guys, we're getting ready for, tiff for Wendy. In the next category, we have Jason Elvis Metivier and his border collie Nightmare. Jason, an agility instructor from Quebec, named his dog Nightmare after the many horror movies he loves to watch between agility sessions. Nightmare is doing well, but then the dog misses the jump. Terrible mistake. Who is to blame, the handler or the dog? Well, the course was very challenging, so there's a lot of areas where dogs would see the wrong obstacle or the wrong side of an obstacle. So the handlers had to really get themselves in good position to get there to cue the correct side they wanted for the dog. You gotta be totally focused for your dog. Your dog needs you in the ring and totally connected at all times because they have no idea when they step onto the start line, the dog has never seen a map. They've never seen the course. You know, they just have to follow your footwork, your handwork, your arm work, and the dog's reading it all. Every look that the dog gives you on course could actually equal to like a fraction of a second. At this level of competition, the IFCS, you cannot have that extra millisecond.
And so the sun sets on the first day of competition. Exhausted, the humans would love to lay their heads on soft Dutch hoof cushion, but the well-being of the dogs always comes first. She can sit down if she wants. Better sit. So you thought she was running as per normal? Good. So I use a combination of physiotherapy style mobilizations to relax muscle. And then we'll combine that with acupuncture, which stimulates the release of endorphins to again help reduce muscle spasm. All the dogs on this team got a canine conditioning program three yeah, months before the event. Yeah so that, you know, they'd be better prepared for these sorts of competitions. So that's a big part of what the physio does as well. Yeah. All right, you. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. You're all set. How did she do today? How she did good? She was ticking a lot. Any more or less than usual or just the same? No, not any more than usual. Sometimes she's better and sometimes she's worse. The specialty that I have is only like seven years old, eight years old, and currently there's only 99 of us in the world that are specialized in treating sports medicine and dogs. In previous world competitions, comment from other countries is they considered a healthcare team to be cheating, which I don't agree with that logic, obviously, but it, that's a perspective where people are coming from, where they, they, they don't even see it as a legitimate thing to be doing. What Olympic team travels without a, a medical staff on board, like none. The muscles just aren't relaxing sufficiently. Do you want me to do some myofascial stuff after? She's my next client. Oh, is she? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Head to tail? That would be my guess, but we'll leave it to your discretion. <laughs> The next morning, Team Canada meets ahead of everybody else. For good reason. The setup of the course for each day is kept a secret. So the earlier you get here, the more time you have to study the course. Today will be challenging. It's gamblers and snooker. The rules can be confusing. Performance of two consecutive obstacles in any direction in the gamble sequence is not allowed. Okay. That's pretty clear. But that's not the gamble. But that doesn't say in the gamble. Points will not be awarded for successful performance of any obstacle twice in sequence. Another obstacle must be attempted first. Like you can take one obstacle. No, no, consecutive. You could do three, five, one, four. Oh, okay. Two consecutive obstacles in any order can't do. So two, three. Two, three, or three, two. This is Chief Judge Anton Kudrin from Russia. He is deeply connected in the agility world. A board member of the IFCS, he is married to Anna Kudrina, here on the left, the manager of the Russian team. First run of the day is snooker. It's like the billiard game, but with dogs. So we have a colored obstacle that cost two, three, four, five, six, seven points. And can, it can be a single obstacle like Whipple, say, frame, or it can be the uh, sequence of obstacle like maybe uh, how we see there, uh, seven obstacle that cost seven. It's a seven, eight tunnel, seven B uh, jump, and seven C jump, uh, backside jump. So if dog uh, completes all the, these three obstacles, it's earned seven points. And the same rules as, as in the billiard game, uh, you must uh, do red, obstacle, then color, red, then color, red, then color, and after this you can go to the closing sequence you, and you must go the course uh, that number it in the scheme two, three, four, five, six, seven. So maximum uh, handler can uh, earn 51 points. The only thing that'll take away all of your points is not doing the finish jump. Zero points. Total zero points. Do the finish jump. Even if you do it backwards. Do the finish jump. And whether under overtime. Do the finish jump. Even if you hear your horn at number three. Do the finish jump.
It is the responsibility of the judges to design the course. Every course is an artistic expression of the individual designer. This is my first time as an international judge. I have designed courses for over 20 years for national levels and Canada. But this is the first time I've designed international courses. Not all handlers should get through it easily running clean. I look at what types of handling challenges I can put in. I look at what types of physical challenges I can put in for dogs as well. You want to be able to see people throw their best at it. That's the beauty of being the judge, is you can watch them run this, this little creation that you've made and, and make it look absolutely like a dance. It's, it's beautiful when it's done well. It's a beautiful thing. This is the last international championship for the nine-year-old Malinois. Soon she will retire from agility. Everybody will have their eyes on her performance. Last year she won gold. Can she do it again? A scary moment on course. Very scary moment. So dogs comes in, super wide. So the dog would have taken off a little bit earlier in order to be able to fit. But now that the dog is in mid air, the dog knows. See right there, the dog can realize my body is not gonna fit around the wing. Dog has to change his mind. Look, when you have, okay, when you're approaching it, when you're approaching a jump, for example, this is the jump standard to the jump standard. The pole goes through the middle. So you have a big wide jump window, right? But as soon as I change the angle, look how the window closes. Now your window even closes more. And now close. This is like this is completely closed. You get a little bit of a window. So when radical or all the dogs coming across the wing of that jump, when they're coming across right there. They suddenly, they suddenly see this very narrow space and they try to get a good approach to get their bodies up and over and then twist and bend to also get around that wing, the other wing stand or the exit. So I believe Radical Rabbit came in, she knew she wasn't going to make it and she doubted herself but she was already in air. 
and she can't stop herself. So she dropped her legs into the bar, bar, and then crashes, and then she tried to kick her legs out. That's why you see the hind end and the butt go into the air. And then I think she might have brought a leg in. You have to look at a different video. She might have brought a little leg in for support on the landing into face onto the ground. And then the dog is, dog is down. See, now the dog goes, mommy, mommy, mommy. But you see how the dog walks normally into Kirsten? You know, and then, you know, the dog is, you know, tails wagging. You know, the dog is, you know, okay, it's, it's shocking for the dog. So Kirsten made a good decision. She goes, you know what, let's just pick you up. You don't even have to walk out of the course because you don't know what the dog has um, suffered at that moment. So she picks up her dog. Let's just go out and get, and get taken care of out there. She's like holding on to her dog so tight. She's so worried. It's, it's a shock. You, you're going to cry. Emotions are there, you know. Yeah, yeah, and then off she goes. Very scary moment. Aside from a slight scrape in her face, I don't really have any evidence of a trauma. That's where those hours of conditioning pay off. The more flexible you are, the better you bounce. Treats! Donna! Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Coming. Coming. Do you have any treats in here? No. I took up a collection from the team. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't give them all at once. <laughs> Are you all right? Okay. We're looking good. It was the British who invented agility 40 years ago. They imagined it to be a sophisticated interaction between dogs and humans, with the dog leading the way. Ask the dog's advice and you will be wise. Don Weaver holds this principle in high regard. I let my dogs train me how to handle. I don't train my dogs. I'm not into saying, this is my handling system, therefore you have to use it. To me, that's very arrogant, and, and you should be using your dog's handling system. They have a natural way of picking up cues from you, and we might as well use it. And that's always going to be the best way of handling, if it's their way. All I care about is how my dog feels. So as long as my dog feels great at the end of that course, then I don't care what happens on it. Other people are totally different, and if they see their dog on the way to an off course, they'll then shout at the dog. You'd think it was like the end of the world, that the dog's gonna jump off a cliff, you know? And, and, and that's not the case. They're, they're just going in a tunnel because you cued it. You know, it's like, get over it. Don't shout at your dog. There should be no culture of blame. And that is the way you can build the relationship. Because blame poisons the relationship between the dog and the handler. Dogs are actually 100% perfect. The more you understand about them, the more you realize just how perfect they are and the way they can react to our cues so fast, the way they try so hard to get everything right, is just incredible. When my dog stood next to me, it's just like another human being stood next to me, and, and in fact, more important than that. And I'm privileged to step on the start line with him every single time. Sadly, this noble concept is lost on the younger generation of handlers from the continent. The dog is not leading them anymore. They are searching for greatness within themselves. It is obvious how ambitious the Italians are. 
to the untrained eye, it is unclear whether the run was successful or not. But for the Italian team, the celebration is always more important than the run. The benefits of the mental coaches are paying off. Here, mental coach Ricardo Togni helps Francesco Rajo to build up his confidence. Uh, my name is Ricardo, I'm a mental coach, and uh, uh, sono qui <laughs> uh, per uh, seguire la nazionale italiana di agility. He's a mental coach, and with his group, he's creating a, a stronger agility team of Italia. His work is helping the athletes to be uh, with, with the mind concentrated on the competition, on the results. Io guardo the position, okay, breath, he respiro. The, the physical position, la reattività, their activity, e cosa succede dopo. And what happened after the the competition prima della competizione successiva and before the competition quando io al cane trasmetto agitazione o nervoso è molto più difficile portare avanti la competizione um, um, when uh, he had to work with uh, a nervous guys the, the nervous uh, reflect on the dogs so uh, he has to take uh, equilibrium on, on the binomial because uh, uh, he reflects the competition. And, uh, if I'm nervous and my dog is nervous, inside uh, is uh, a war. And then, and then be, uh, begin the problems of the dogs. And the people say he's a mad dog, but it's not the truth. He's a mad handler, not he's a mad dog. If you are relaxed, il tuo comando è fluido. Ok. Se non sei not relaxed. Ok. È come like dancing. È come like dancing. Se you, if you take a, a girl and you make dance. Questa è tua. The girl make what you are going to do. Okay. And the same is the dog with the dog. My dogs, uh, I think uh, that uh, is uh, perfect. Always perfect. You, you can't think uh, without uh, dogs. Uh, it's not nice to say, but I cried uh, too much when my first husky died, then when uh, my father died. Because uh, when uh, the animal is with you every day, every day, Every day. Uh, it's difficult to forget. Chukina has no money in her tight budget for mental coaches. Russia is not an exceptionally rich country. We just don't have the facilities for indoor training like in every city. Even in Moscow, we have one agility facility and two others that we go to our horse places and horses there till 10 p.m. We're only allowed in there at 11 and we have to carry out all the equipment, do the training, sometimes till 3 a.m., sometimes till 5.
For the Russians, they are partners. The expectations are high. Well, we believe in skills and in verbals, and we believe in the fact that you have to trust the dog to do its job while you're doing your job. It's just the relationship and the work ethic you establish with the dog that if I'm giving you a work to do a job, you have to do something about it, and then we celebrate together. And they'll do anything to make you happy because they're dogs. That's the best thing about them. Oh my God, you're changing those pants before the next friggin' dogs. Because I can feel that bracer's gonna come down. Pull up a bit, hold up, hold up. Pull them up. Okay, that's better. Better? Is that better? It doesn't matter how you do as long as you look good. <laughs> Kirsten, I actually meant, I actually meant handling, but okay. <laughs> this is now the chance for Crunchy to prove that a mutt with a questionable background can do as well as all these designer dogs that dominate the sport. Does Crunchy know what is at stake? Unlike Border Collies, who are extremely focused, Crunchy needs a lot of encouragement along the way. Oh no, she's missed a contact. And she's come in from the wrong side of the jump. Oh well, she's trying really hard. This is all about experience. She's a little erratic on the tee, too. Then the sprint to the finish. She's really very fast. Here is a typical example of why it is often so frustrating to watch agility. The first obstacles are very smooth, relaxed. Had to pull back for the weaves, but a great entry. Dog walk looks like he got both contacts. Great series of jumps there. Tito. Contacts look good. Broad jump, tunnel. Over the frame and a sprint to the finish. <laughs> However, Team Canada should restrain their excitement. It is too early to celebrate. Judge Lebec is still discussing this one with the line judges. They can't come to an agreement, so it goes to Jan Paul in the control room. Want to see some? Yeah, why not? Um, I'm not the judge itself, but I'm doing the technology behind it. This tournament, we were filming 16 cameras all around the field. We can play it back and we can do it frame by frame, and they're all synchronized, so we can switch angles as well. Can be really close. It's milliseconds, and it's uh, millimeters. I think that's a good idea to have a backup also for the judge, that in case he misses something, the technology is there to back him up. Based on the results of this sophisticated video system, the dog has missed a contact. Jan Paul lets the judge know. Penalty for Team Canada. Luckily, Team Canada has its own video system. And like Jan Paul, 
they were filming the one from different angles. It's always good to have a backup. There's contact on the dog walk. Who has one? Oh, Fred. You, you can see the contact where you're standing? Okay. Every time. Nice. So we're just looking for the end, this end of the dog walk. That one, uh, I can still see blue in there, but what about where he hits at the bottom? Yeah, can you go frame by frame? Looks like you got one paw on the top. Evidently, the judge made the wrong call. Shauna hands in a grievance. Every team is allowed three grievances per day, which must be handed in within 15 minutes after the run. One of our players on Team Canada, Michel Patry, with his dog, Border Collie Nias, he ran his agility standard on the dog walk. He was completing the dog walk, left early, but landed into the corner end zone. Judge called a five for a refusal for missing the contact zone, but according to our videos, it shows that the dog lands into the corner, making contact with paws into the corner of contact. And they have to verify on video in the official room to go, yes, it happened, or it didn't happen. They'll see, yes, the dog landed into the corner and made contact with the orange zone of the downside of the dog walk. Yay, that'll be good news. We have to wait, Jean Paul. He running all this stuff. <laughs> You tell me. Well, <laughs> the that's the discussion. My opinion, dog first falls, land to the ground. Yeah, it's a hair contact. It's first, first ball yes. on the ground, and then, and then maybe it hits the... Uh, back no. Pulse, no. Back pulse, ne never hits no, the... No, 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 I think, I think it's only hairs brushing it. Yes, the uh, ball is Trish, Anton, what's your opinion I, on this? I can't say anything. It's a Canadian dog. Okay. <laughs> my, my opinion, you call, you call, you call Stace, it was a... Uh, I can look. I can't, I can't comment. It yeah. wasn't touch on the contact. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, we uh, need you, yeah. Canada, Canada yeah. representative. Is that all? Mm -hmm. I'll try to find this side. Okay. If you ask me, if you ask me, it's just the hairs brushing the contact. Couldn't have any closer anyway. Oh, Niaz, okay. Not the fastest, but it's okay. He'll take that, thank you. Okay, Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. Thank you. After looking at official footage, they sh it shows good news that the dog brushed the corner of the orange contact zone, so that means we no longer have five faults. So for that run, for Michelle Patry and Nia, it is zero fault. It is a clean round. He is going to be so happy. And the very nice thing is they actually let you take pictures to show, to prove that, yes, their eyes and their video sees exactly what we saw, which is the dog is coming down, getting closer. Now here, the outside left leg has made contact with the outside edge of the contact orange zone, uh, good news for Canada. So I'm, I'm very happy. So I'm gonna go to get a new form back. <laughs> no, hey, it's not count. Only power. Dog might touch power, but on, on the video it clearly shows that dog lands with her front paws to the ground. No touching the dog walk. No, I think uh, Lisa understands it. And she took a video. She took a video and took a pictures. So I think she knew. She know. The picture they show me. See the picture they show me. He see how it goes in like that on the curve. So that is contact. That is because it got pushed in. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask them again. I'll go back. 
But they can't confirm that. Yeah. Sorry. And, um, oh, he's there. Sorry, I misunderstood. Oh, oh, can we look at that again? Because I misunderstood. They said that I thought it was good, but they're saying it was no good. No, it, it wasn't good. So if there was no contact, the hair it would not become that. Yeah, but the poles all already on the ground. The pole in this. Oh, you guys are all on the ground. Oh, oh, all on the ground. Oh, so this part is not good. No, no. Oh, that's the problem. Oh, that's the problem. Yeah. Okay, so even though this is touching, is not good. Yeah, the same oh. the same as as a dog touched by the. Oh, I see. Oh, so it has to be a, oh, foot or part of foot only. Yeah. Got it. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Besides grievances for their own dogs, the teams are encouraged to put in disputes against the other competitors. All cameras are pointed at last year's world champion Radical Rabbit. A good run, but then a dispute comes in. Rat has missed a contact and loses 10 points. It's a stupid rule. No. Trade your dog or change You should take rule. a petition. Just go get all the countries to sign it right now. No. Don't want my dog to here? slam herself into the front of the frame. I know, right? Stupid rule. I'm going to start looking upside to other countries now. Shauna is fuming. She has been in enough competitions to know who was snitching. Not surprisingly, everybody is filming the Russians. How is it possible that they win all the time? They must be cheating somehow. Good job, good job. Russia. Again, they are amazing. <laughs> I know. I'm curious. Almost breathe. Oh no, we got it. We got a pawn right. there. Yep, they're All good. Right. They're good. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that in the paper, please. Did she touch the dog? I'm going to check after. Ugh. Good job. Okay, and this one is our Russian team. That was the Russian? Yeah. And they complain because they uh, think... No, not complain. It's uh, no, Someone uh, said she missed that contact. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, they, were, and some... they were right. Uh, we'll show, please, a video with a uh, uh, Russian dog. Yeah, no dog work. No objections. <laughs> okay. I've seen there was no dog work. <laughs> Just send. <laughs> I can have a look at it, but... Why? My nogi, my feet. Well, I've seen there was no dog work. Yeah, you must have. Like, everybody's seen there was no dog work. I've seen there was no dog work. Yeah, well... I don't know where it was. That's probably very nice cinema. Yep. So back this yeah. One. Yes. Let's this one is Kirsten and Rat's last chance to prove that they are the world champions. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Be aggressive. Just, just.
It's amazing how a big dog like her can race through a tunnel. Her back end is so low to get more grip to push her way through the weaves. She nearly flies over the dog walk. Kisten masterfully sends her through the tunnel and back over a complicated set of jumps. Pulling her up to gear down through the tunnel, sprinting and long open strides to the finish line. Without a doubt, this run deserves the gold medal. Again, let's keep our expectations low. As we have learned, nothing can be taken for granted. It seems the Americans saw something Judge Lebeck did not see. Rabbit, 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 where was the rabbit? I have to see mm -hmm. that dog jumps over the contact zone. Yep. Definitely missed, missed the contact, and yeah. uh, so I'll have to change the call. And at that point, the dog is uh, faulting. Therefore, anything that happens after that um, Didn't count. doesn't count. Therefore, the dog gets the point value for the first obstacle and loses all the points thereafter. So points for the A-frame, the tunnel, and the two jumps, and as well as the gamble bonus. Yes. Yeah. Stay. We did end up filing a grievance on a missed up contact, and it was clear on video review that they missed it. I'm great friends, know most of the Canadian team. You know, we don't want to do it, but then again, I also know that they don't, you know, if, if it was in my case, I, I completely understand. The nice thing about this is everybody wants to earn their spot. You know, you don't want to be given a gold medal when there was a fault. I mean, I would have never wanted to receive a medal when I knew my dog did something it shouldn't and have it sneak through. It's, it's all in good sportsmanship. It's part of the rules. I mean, as long as the IFCS has been around, it's always been one of the strategies. And most of the teams take advantage of it. USA! Well, not everybody. We have never been disputing the other countries' dog scores uh, or mistakes. Uh, we don't think it's fair, you know. I think uh, we think that the uh, dispute should only be submitted regarding our own dogs. Because I think that is a sportsmanship. This should be based on a sportsmanship. It's, I think it's just a Japanese culture. Um, speak, uh, we don't want to speak real about us. Yeah, harmony is most, most important for us. And they will never forget the time when somebody snitched on them. Yeah, I think three years ago, uh, <laughs> Great Britain uh, disputed. Yeah, and Gambler, I think. Yeah, one of my uh, team members stepped over the uh, line. Yes. And that was not uh, scored, but uh, some countries, uh, I think that uh, Great Britain disputed. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. are kind of disappointed a little bit at that time, yes. It is Crunchy's last run of the competition. So far, she hasn't been very focused. But Kirsten made it clear. It's now or never. Show these purebreds what the mud is made of. She's off. 
She's a little slow through the first tunnel, but picking up speed. Excellent handling through the next obstacles and tunnel. Quanchi is really listening today. Very smooth handling over these jumps. She glides through the weaves like an eel. Slips through the tunnel and elegantly sprints over the final obstacle. Yes, an amazing run. 